Now, the recital category is basically for solo voice, but not in song. So these are generally operatic arias and aria recitals. From uh, Anne-Sophie von Otter with Les Arts Florissants, William Christie on Archive, we have a disc of French Baroque arias. Uh, from Decca, we've got uh, Jonas Kaufmann with the Mahler Chamber Orchestra and Claudio Bardo doing basically German arias, Mozart, Schubert, Beethoven and Wagner. And from uh, the mezzo at the moment, Joyce Di Donato, uh, Colbrand the Muse. Why don't we start with uh, Anne-Sophie von Otter? And I think I'm right in saying that this is her first disc of French Baroque music. She seems to have sung everything else but French Baroque. Yes, I remember hearing her when she was still a student at the Guild Hall in London and uh, immediately been smitten. We gave her a prize for something she'd recorded on tape and um, one knew she was going to be a star, but even I was surprised that she came up suddenly and became a star overnight, really. And she's such an incredibly versatile singer. Oh, absolutely. And this, I didn't expect her to be doing uh, uh, French Baroque harriers, but she does them beautifully, very stylish. And of course, she's got very stylish accompanists in Les Arts Florissants, William Christie, who oh, yes. have this music in their blood. Jonas Kaufmann, what a discovery he is when he suddenly seemed to appear on the scene. It was, it was very exciting. Indeed. And it's also quite unusual to find a tenor, I mean, a particularly a German tenor who's not only at home singing the German repertoire, but he's absolutely at home in the Italian repertoire, you know, singing Verdi and, and Puccini. Another uh, another very versatile artist. Absolutely. Well, well, this disc focuses on Mozart, Schubert, Beethoven and Wagner. It's quite rare to have a singer singing Mozart and Wagner on the same disc. He's equally at home in them. He's marvellous. Yeah, so, you know, we go from Lohengrin to uh, Zauberflöte, and, and of course he sings uh, Floristan's great first aria from Fridelio, an opera he's, uh, he's just recorded complete with a bardo, so I think this is a very nice little taster. And then, of course, of uh, Die Valkyra and Parsifal. A very beautiful voice, but an incredibly expressive voice as well. And one gets the feeling that, actually, this is a tenor who's a very intelligent person as well, which you can't always say. And... Uh, it's the more remarkable when his voice is on the verge of being a held in tenor, that uh, and what, what you need is Floristan in, um, in Fidelio is very much a major voice, a heroic voice in, in every way. And the range of expression in, in that is, is enormous. Yet yeah, it's absolutely terrific, yes. <laughs> And the third disc is uh, the American mezzo Joyce Di Donato singing um, Rossini. Now, this is uh, a disc of arias written for Isabella Colbran, who was, as the record is called, Colbran the Muse. She, she not only was a huge inspiration for Rossini, but she actually turned out later to become Mrs. Rossini as they got married. This focuses on perhaps less often heard Rossini, because these are opera seria. There's none of the comic arias here, so we've got Armida, Donna del Lago, Mameto Secondo, Semiramide, Otello and uh, Armida again. Another singer who's sort of really blossomed of late. Absolutely, and, and remarkable that although she has concentrated on opera seria on the, and avoided the comic operas, there is tremendous variety in this. Very, very expressive in all the range of things. Well, and ferociously you... difficult music. I mean, Colbrand was completely fearless, obviously, when it came to cadenzas and popping music. in octave runs and heaven knows what. Very much so. And uh, it's also got the Santa Cecilia Orchestra, who are enjoying something of a, of a renaissance at the moment. I mean, partly under a Antonio Papano, who we'll come to in a moment, but sounding really rather good. Absolutely. I, I mean, uh, there they've got their own dedicated concert hall, which... Uh, I think helps, um, which is devoted to them alone, so they um, benefit from that all the time. And, as you say, with uh, Papano as their regular conductor, they're, they're excellent anyway for his excellent training. <laughs> Oh, 
Let's talk about the Naxos disc in the choral category of Vaughan Williams. This is uh, the Dona Nobis Pacem Cantata and uh, Sancta Civitas, which he calls an oratorio, although quite how the distinction works is difficult to tell. This features the Bach Choir, the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, various other uh, choirs from Winchester Cathedral, under David Hill, who of course is the conductor of the Bach Choir. I mean, two wonderful Wonderful British choral works, these. I think they come from the period of disillusion in Vaughan Williams' life after the First World War. There's an element of bitterness. It's, uh, it's not easeful music, but my goodness, it's inspired. Wonderful. And they're both works that tend to be neglected because of their mid-length. It's, they're not easy to put into concerts, alas. But they fit very nicely together on a, on a single CD. Perfect couple. very much. It's sort of one of those big institutions but never gets recorded. No, that, that's true. It's got a wonderful tradition. I've known many people who've been members of the Bach Choir and they they swear by it and it, rightly so. Now, something of a rarity. This is uh, the oratorio by Franck Martin called Golgotha, written just after the Second World War. Quite an austere work that took uh, the famous picture by Rembrandt, an etching of Christ on the cross. Black and white, obviously, and a very dramatic painting. As I say, slightly daunting work, but, but it's hard to imagine it done better here than under Daniel Royce, and he's conducting a Capella Amsterdam and an Estonian symphony orchestra. Yes, Franck Martin is a composer I always admire, but somehow he keeps you at arm's length, in my, my experience, and I don't get bowled over as I hope I will. But, but this you could not imagine being better done. Marvellous. <laughs> The Santa Cecilia Orchestra and their choir under Papani crop up a sensational recording of the Verdi Requiem with uh, soloists Anya Hateros, Sonia Ganassi, Rolando Villazon and René Papa. That's an EMI recording. Um, last, a, a Verdi Requiem to sort of fit into the great tradition of Verdi Requiem Absolutely. recordings, I think. It's always a, a, central, um, a central piece of repertory for the Italian-style conductor. And Papano, really, I mean, um, not since Giulini's great uh, classic recording have I been so moved by a Verdi Requiem, and there have been plenty of rivals as well. So I think this is a, yet another of Papano's superb series of Italian works, operas, and then this choral work. And if it's very strongly cast, if that's quite the right word for a Verdi Requiem. Not a weak link. I mean, so many recordings, there's always been one singer you kind of wished hadn't been there and someone else had, but you really can't say that about this. How right you are. I've, <laughs> many a time I've been uh, persuaded, and then some conductors seem to enjoy having singers with a, a ferocious wobble, which I, you know, I mean, I've got ears that pick up a wobble rather <laughs> quickly and... Uh, and I then find it difficult to enjoy. But here, Papana has chosen wonderful singers. Now, we've talked about the soloists and the orchestra of Santa Cecilia, but obviously a, a major uh, element of a recording of the Verdi Requiem is the choir. And I think what's quite extraordinary about this recording is we don't really know an enormous amount about the choir of the uh, Santa Cecilia Academy. My word, they sing beautifully. Absolutely. There was a time when the members of Italian choirs were disappointed Pavarotti's, disappointed Tibaldi's or whoever, 
and therefore they didn't really put their guts into the performances even on record but here they really are superb and uh, match any British choir uh, in the way that they sing and arguably I suppose you could say that they're more idiomatic being Italians well, absolutely. I mean, it's a long time since we've had a, a pure Italian Verdi Requiem and putting the soloists to one side. So uh, yes. this is really rather nice. Well, let's let's hear everyone uh, at full tilt. <laughs> Thank you. 